Namaste, good afternoon, happy Vinayaka Chaturthi, and welcome to the fourth session of webinar series on Disaster Resilient India 2030, organized by Youth Red Cross and Internal Quality Assurance Elsri, Ayapa College for Women, Chungangade, Kanyakumari District, in association with Disaster Management and Rehabilitation Trust. Let's start the day with a silent prayer. Welcome back. Namaste again. Now it's my turn to deliver the welcome address on behalf of Youth Red Cross, IQAC, and Disaster Management and Rehabilitation Trust. First and foremost, let me extend my hearty welcome to our principal ma'am, Dr. KV Jayashree, who has been constantly encouraging us to organize programs that are uh, the, uh, that are intended to bring in changes in the society. A very hearty welcome to you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Next, my welcome goes to Professor Vinodzi Menon, founder member, NDMA, Garment of New Delhi. As the participants of this program, you might have been noticing that Vinodzi, uh, Vinod Professor Vinodzi has been a constant source of encouragement and he is really behind uh, the success of this program. A very hearty welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, my welcome goes to Mr. P. Michael Veda Shiromani, former civil servant and chairman of DMRT. Sir will be joining us very soon. A very hearty welcome to him, too. Next, my welcome goes to Dr. V. Ram Mohan, professor retired Madras University, Chennai, who is going to the, uh, uh, give the keynote address today on coastal erosion. A very hearty welcome to you, sir. Next, my welcome goes to A. Suresh Kumar, Organizing Secretary of our webinar series and also the Secretary of DMRT. A very hearty welcome to you, sir. It's my privilege to welcome Dr. K. Meena, IQAC Coordinator, Sri Ayapa College for Women, who is another source of encouragement and uh, her guidance has helped us in organizing the programs of this sort. A very hearty welcome to you, uh, ma'am. Next, my welcome goes to Dr. A. Veliyapan, a Youth Red Cross organizer of Manon Manyam Sundarnar University. A very hearty welcome you to sir. And the participants of this program who have been uh, traveling along, along with us throughout the series and who are really the uh, key so forces behind the success of this program. A very hearty welcome to you to all. Next. Let me invite Professor Vinod Simenon, founding member NDMA, to deliver the inaugural address. So please, the platform is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Savita and also Dr. Jayashree, uh, the principal of the IFA College for Women, and also to um, the uh, Youth Red Cross uh, team, uh, led by Dr. Velmani, and also uh, other colleagues, uh, Mr. Suresh Kumar, the secretary of uh, the DMRT, the Disaster Management Rehabilitation Trust, and Sri Michael Shiromani, the, uh, the chairman of the Disaster Management and Rehabilitation Trust, and uh, Dr. Ram Mohan, you know, a retired professor in the University of Madras. Very happy to see you here, and then, you know, also looking forward to listening to your presentation. The topic is extremely important. Uh, the theme of today's session is on cyclones and sea erosion. And cyclones actually, we know that, uh, you know, India actually faces cyclones, uh, you know, repeatedly. We recently had the cyclone Amphan, which hit uh, West Bengal, and especially the Sundarbans area, and also Calcutta, and uh, many other districts in that region. Uh, we also had uh, impact of that in, in Odisha, and we have been having these repeated cyclones happening uh, in, in almost uh, every year. We have uh, cyclonic storms, and sometimes it dissipates into uh, a mild, uh, you know, depression, and then you know it just disappears. But however, there have been instances when we've had serious and severe devastating cyclones, 
So the super cyclone of 1999 uh, in Orissa was one of the most devastating cyclones which India has faced. And this is 1999 in October when we had uh, the severe devastating super cyclone in which we lost about 10,000 people and uh, more than 325,000 you know, heads of cattle were also killed in the super cyclone. And uh, large numbers of people, several lakhs of people had to be shifted to, you know, relief camps and, you know, several people were actually in, uh, in thousands of relief camps, you know, which were set up by the government. Now, I think uh, in, you know, 2013, when we had Cyclone Filin, you know, which was also of this similar magnitude and similar intensity, Cyclonic Storm was there in we felt that you know this would also be a devastating cyclone but however uh, because of the evacuation of more than a million people by the orissa disaster management authority and also the osdma the orissa state disaster management authority and the uh, odraf which is the orissa disaster rapid action force of the government of orissa and uh, the interagency group orissa the civil society network and many others working along with the National Disaster Response Force, they were able to reduce and minimize the loss of life due to that cyclone to just 23. And they evacuated more than 1 million people, more than 10 lakh people were shifted to the relief camps and cyclone shelters. So I think uh, that actually shows the potential that with better preparedness, we will be able to reduce the devastating impact and loss of life and loss of disruption of livelihood, which happens. So I'm very happy that we have this theme in the seminar series, which has been taken up by the uh, DMRT along with the uh, Youth Red Cross and IEPA College for Women. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, you know we have been having these discussions and this will also be uploaded on the uh, you know YouTube. Uh -huh. and so we will be able to see this uh, presentation by Dr. Ramohan. And this will be useful to the students because uh, we are going through a very disturbing period of the COVID. And uh, I understand that being a weekend on Saturday, it, the sessions were kept primarily because we could actually have access to a larger number of people who would be attending this program. And I hope that, uh, you know, the students of the college and also the students of the universities in Tamil Nadu will also take interest in these programs. And we could actually circulate this through the community radio programs and others so that you know it will actually reach to a larger audience. So the Red Cross could also share this with uh, you know, their network, WhatsApp groups, social media, Facebook, so that large numbers of people could listen to people like Dr. Ramohan. You know, he has enormous experience in this uh, field. And then you know, we will be able to benefit from his experience and his insights. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to uh, have this uh, seminar series, uh, especially this session on cyclones and sea erosion by Professor Ramohan inaugurated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. As usual, your words, your words are really a source of encouragement for us. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, let me invite uh, Mr. A. Suresh Kumar, Secretary DMRT and the Organizing Secretary of our uh, webinar series to uh, give his insights on cyclone risk reduction and resilience. Sir, please. Madam, please uh, unmute me. I have to share, share no. the presentation. Ah, okay, okay. Please share. So most distinguished our chairman who will be joining with us, our uh, great inspiration and gate friend, philosopher and gate, uh, respected honorable Minot Manan sir, founder member NDMA, my professor, Dr. Ramohan sir, respected principal madam, Valiapan sir, Professor Savida, and my dear colleagues in this program, especially the participants across the country to join in this program. So it's my privilege to be with you for 
another 15 to 20 minutes regarding the cyclone that devastated our country. Sir, Minister rightly in his inaugural speech said that the Odisha super cyclone uh, really awakened the mind of government as well as the community. Accordingly, disasters are not bound by political boundaries and have no social and economic consideration. They are borderless as they affect both developing and developed countries. India has been vulnerable in very varying degree to large number of natural as well as human-made disasters on account of its unique geoclimate and socio-economic conditions. It is vulnerably, highly vulnerable to flood, drought, cyclone, earthquake, landslide, avalanches, and forest fire. Out of 36 states and union territories in the country, 27 of them are disaster prone. Almost 58.6 percentage of a land mass is prone to earthquake of moderate to very high intensity. Over 40 million hectares, that is 12 percentage of the land are prone to flood and river erosion. Of the 7,516 kilometer long coastline of India, close to 5,700 kilometers is prone to cyclone and tsunami. 68 percentage of the cultural area is vulnerable to drought and the hilly area are at risk from landslide and avalanches. India is one of the most flood prone countries in the world. The principal reason for flood lie in very nature of natural ecological system in the country, namely the monsoon. The you have started the screen sharing. Ah, okay, 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 okay. The average rainfall in India is 1,150 mm with significant variation across the country. The annual rainfall along with the western coast and the western gods, Koshi hills and over the most of the uh, Brahmaputra Valley amounts to more than 2,500 mm. Most of the flood occur during the monsoon period and are usually associated with uh, tropical storms or depression, active monsoon conditions and uh, break monsoon situation. India is prone to a extraordinary variety of climate region. With this in small introduction, let me proceed to the topic assigned to me that uh, DDMA, District Disaster Management Authority under the leadership of district collector, mainly involved in the rescue relief operation of the respective district. State Disaster Management Authority always supported to the district uh, Disaster Management Authority, NDMA. We are fortunate to have the founder member of NDMA. Sir, you have laid a strong foundation. India is now well prepared. The role of DDMA and SDMA, NDMA is very important, especially in cyclone risk reduction area. The Disaster Management Act drafted and supported by our chairman, Michael Vedasiromani, sir, and our um, um, respected uh, men and sir, they have engraved in the Disaster Management Act, the subsection 8, 9, and 12, chapter 7 of Disaster Management Act 2005, to develop training modules, educational materials, undertake training, research, documentation, publication, capacity building, and dissemination of knowledge, information related activity, assist formulation of policies, plan strategies, and framework for disaster risk reduction. So this way, the disaster management system in the country is developed accordingly. We are well prepared enough. Coming to the geo geography of cyclone, as mentioned, the subcontinent is worst affected region of the world is exposed to nearly 10% of the world tropical cyclones affecting India. There are 13 coastal states, our union territories encompassing 84 coastal districts which are affected by cyclone. Four states, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal is worst affected. Recently, we had ampen landfall in 24 uh, Paragon district of West Bengal, Calcutta that uh, 
there were very good preparedness. IMD did their role and uh, preparedness was there. People were evacuated. Now the situation there is, along with the COVID, uh, it is uh, very difficult for the frontline workers and the responders. And because of the people in the shelters, as well as in the affected area, the disaster uh, uh, operation management uh, preparedness became a very big challenge. 40% of the total population lies in 100 kilometer of coastline. Data for the period of 80 2000 shows that on an average annually 370 million people are exposed to cyclone. India experienced nine deadliest cyclone out of 308, 103 cyclones were severe in nature as our uh, uh, said. So cyclone and their impacts in India, as we say, preliminary education, high school education and uh, higher secondary education, the depression, deep depression, cy cyclonic storm, severe cyclonic, very severe and super cyclonic storm, and with the wind speed of uh, 31 to 119 already affected uh, our country. The, when we go to the history of major tropical cyclones in India, 1891 to 2002, the Odisha, as our uh, uh, NDMA founders have said, Odisha experienced 98 uh, uh, cyclones. Then come to Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and uh, Tamil Nadu, 54. This is the past history. The objective of this uh, presentation is DDMA, SDMA should reduce the vulnerability of coastal community to cyclone and other hydrometeorological hazards. Improved early warning dissemination system. Indian government is promoting a lot of uh, new technologies and advancements. I suggest on this August uh, 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 occasion that India should think of mission dissemination. Early warning and preparedness is there, but we have to connect the last mile the, about this uh, early warning dissemination. The lady who is uh, cooking in the kitchen should reach, receive the message of early warning disseminated from National Emergency Operations Center, State Emergency Operations Center, and District Emergency Operations Center. It should reach to the kitchen of a woman, then only we can save the lives. Enhanced capacity at local, to, uh, local communities to respond disasters and improved access to emergency shelter. Shelters are constructed in uh, uh, every district, at least uh, coastal uh, districts. In Tamil Nadu is having 13 coastal districts, uh, 10 to 15 emergency shelters, multi-purpose evacuation shelters are constructed. And whether that shelters are properly managed, and it is a joint ownership of government as well as uh, community. And that uh, uh, technology and other, uh, what do you call, intervention is required to maintain the system for the use of people when there, there is an incident. Evacuation routes should be uh, set. Alternate evacuation route is most important because people will be using the same path so that it is very difficult to escape. And the protection against wind storm, flooding, Simultaneously, uh, many disasters will cross. When cyclone passes, uh, we, we, we experience uh, lightning, we experience a flood, so many devastations are happen. So we have to prepare it. Strengthening DRM disaster response uh, mechanism, capacity at the central state and local level so that we can save the community. Vulnerable and understanding the issues and solution on governments and administration is very important. Discuss about the current practices in the coastal disasters reduction monitoring. Tamil Nadu and uh, many coastal uh, states implemented this CBDRM, Community-Based Disaster Risk Reduction Program. We have formed the community level uh, volunteers for uh, first aid, uh, the early warning, and for uh, uh, evacuation of people, shelter management, and many five groups were formed to uh, even search and rescue operation was with the support of community because the, when there is an emergency, only the community people will be there, they have to respond to the situation and highlight the environmental as well as emerging issues in context with urbanization and the climate, urban flooding and uh, uh, these are all the main issue to the government. How to manage the cyclone? There are many structural and non-structural uh, measures. The cyclone, any disaster will not kill people. Normally, shelters constructed uh, 
tree we have planted uh, and many other buildings we have constructed uh, all these uh, may collapse during emergency so so structural and non structural measures we have to take these measures can be adopted and tackled on state to state basis under the national cyclone risk mitigation project be implemented under the support of world bank tamil nadu cbdrm project was supported by uh, world bank and uh, many other states are also following that and uh, as i already said the last mile connectivity the early warning to reach the last citizen of the country then only we can save people construction and uh, sustainable maintenance of multi purpose cyclone shelters and that has to be managed properly enhanced capacity on coping capacity of the people has to be enhanced and the benefits of of all these ants cyclone also supportive to the citizen relief drought condition simultaneously for flood and drought there are some departments uh, uh, working because we experience uh, uh, very go good rain in kerala flood we experienced uh, more rain but in short span the we experienced uh, Uh, water table of that area will go down so drinking water itself is a uh, very difficult and so this monsoon and these cyclones will bring uh, 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 what you call uh, will give more benefit to the community and uh, heat the now the heat wave is a major phenomena in the northern region so uh, we have we are planning to uh, we are suggesting to construct uh, uh, shelters to save the people from this heat wave so uh, so this heat wave may, will be reduced because of this cyclone and uh, many uh, temperature rise temperature rise is a major reason for many disasters so that also will support you so for all these uh, uh, disaster management exercise build back mechanism is more important build back better whenever there is a disaster and after the disaster we have to keep the people as they were in their original state of life for which disaster reduction community recovery and effective implementation of policies are more important so i'll be touching few points on cyclone mostly few photographs i am sharing with you how this uh, disasters affecting cyclone affecting uh, uh, people so that our uh, professor ramon sir will give lot of solution i am suggesting that i have taken an example of uh, kanyakumari district this is the revenue and local bodies and the population of the uh, territory district so of course we had a lot of uh, monsoon northeast monsoon 2017 only we experienced this oki cyclone and already pre identified 60 vulnerable areas were there and the five interdepartmental zonal teams were appointed nodal officers were there first responders first professional responders were there including the women responders were there and the backup power and uh, dis dissertation many other preparedness measures were there all of a sudden on 29 11 2017 uh, forecast of depression was informed to the district collector and that was informed in back to the line department uh, and uh, imd bulletin was received by mail and uh, so many way fishermen were informed uh, by about 2 pm yeah, that is one day before the cyclone but uh, the problem in our district is that uh, our kanyakumari district fishermen go for deep sea fishing they will be in the uh, midst of the sea and they will be venturing fishing for more than 5 6 days it was a very total failure of our system that we could not reach the people in the deep sea so that is why we lost many love, uh, lives uh, during that uh, cyclone on 30th november we experienced the real uh, what do you call this uh, cyclone the imd bulletin was issued and uh, whatsapp group many informations were given the forecast fishermen on high sea in the multi multi day fishing as i said they were in the deep sea fishing for uh, more than a week so this is a track of oki cyclone how it is uh, it is uh, formed near sri lanka and slowly slowly it uh, moved and finally touched kanyakumari and uh, the southern part of tamil nadu and uh, kerala and uh, this is a tropical cyclone how it is moving 100 km southwest of kanyakumari it was there and uh, finally we experienced so all these informations were disseminated still in addition to this we had a heavy rainfall 
before 29th, 30th, and uh, for uh, four days, they experienced a heavy uh, rainfall. That added a further flood situation to this district. The SDRFs, the major component of uh, NDMA, when SAR was there in the act also, it was there. NDR, National Disaster Response Fund, as well as State Disaster Funds was created. And that state fund was supported to the district administration. This is the situation, how people affected rubber, banana, all the agricultural uh, uh, agriculture is supported. See, restoration. Restoration is the immediate response that uh, we have to support to the community for ensuring. So immediately after the next day, we experienced all the dams in Pechipare, Perinjani, major dams, they were flown and we have to open it. And finally that ended up into flood also. This is a major 200, 300 year old uh, trees fallen. Search and rescue was a big challenge. And almost all the area of the district affected. So the culvert bridges and the pipelines, and so before after is very important situation. We have to establish build back mechanism that the departmental officials, uh, they were okay. This is Chudal, a uh, border of Kerala. How before after situation? Nedungulam pond also get affected. Around 2000 ponds were here and almost uh, uh, more than 50 to 60% of the ponds get affected. School buildings also collapse during this period and uh, government primary school and the flood. So, the road was laid two months back. We have to break open to help the community. And the school toilets in the uh, Totamala is a forest area, tribal area, and it is a, a pipeline again getting affected. The drinking water became a major issue. And uh, how we have to uh, lay roads to uh, reach the community. And uh, the, there are some area that became island during that uh, period. This is also another Kerala border area, Konaseri, and uh, how banana again, uh, different parts of the district. And the hospital buildings also got collapsed and the compound walls. Compound wall is a major phenomena, construction of compound wall. The strength of the compound wall is more important. We experienced many deaths during disasters on this uh, compound wall collapse. This crop damage, this is the inspection by the secretary. And we had been to uh, uh, deep forest by sailing in the boat. We went for leap operation. That when the dam's full capacity was 48. When we crossed that area, the full uh, 46 per, uh, feet water was there. In spite of that, we could reach the community. This is the community, Tachamalai. Uh, two kilometers we have to travel in the boat and we supported the community. Relief materials were were given and uh, even tarpaulins were this is a uh, tarpaulins were uh, given and we supported them how to use it and uh, i was uh, uh, associated with the preparation of disaster uh, district disaster management plan of plan of kanyakuma district for the last five years so i was uh, uh, on it so, and uh, we are creating a lot of awareness program disaster uh, management training program this was uh, one such a program for teacher educators and electricity restoration that became another challenge. For first one week, we had no electricity, and that became a very big challenge. Removal of uh, unused uh, this electrical poles, road, and the seed everywhere. Uh, total devastation. Tribal house that got collapsed, and the cleaning of rock fall. As we experienced very recently in Kerala, that uh, uh, there was a landslide like this. Small uh, rock that uh, came down and uh, it did uh, to set the route uh, and agricultural uh, uh, commodities, all this area field, potters, handloom, everywhere affected. And uh, not only the local capacity, the disaster we always say, if it is beyond the coping capacity of the local community, we call it disaster. Maharashtra, Lakshadweep, Karnataka, Gujarat, Kerala, every government supported us and they rescued our people they have given as a facilities as a, their guest. And this is the people we brought from Lakshadweep, Nayantol, 2017, how they, and the relief assistance were given in Karnataka, Maharashtra, and in the uh, Trivandrum Government Hospital. So assessment is very important component when there is a failure. So Kanyakumari district devastated. This is a fishery, fishing harbor, Muttam Harbor, before after situation. And then we lay a lot of uh, these uh, uh, 
uh, stones. So our sir will be telling. So we, if we create anything against nature, that will get collapsed. That was that's what uh, we experienced in this Colossal fishing harbor, displaced uh, uh, corlocks. So we, uh, when we lay all these things uh, in front of nature, we cannot. Uh, so Colossal fishing harbor again. Uh, Thank you, Patanam. Also, we have the similar experience. We are this. Uh, uh, we we have to spend more time, energy, and money for this uh, supporting this community and this uh, village. Uh, sea level uh, rise is going on. So, in spite of all these things, uh, we have to live. So, His Excellency Governor of Tamil Nadu visited the affected area, and Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu being the uh, chairman of the SDMA visited us and NDMA uh, uh, chairman as well as Prime Minister of India visited us and supported us and uh, all this uh, help uh, strengthened uh, as I said uh, uh, build back mechanism some extent established. It is an uh, experience we received especially Kanyakumar district like that other district we also will be having a lot of experience so together we save the community. Working together works. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Suresh Kumar, sir. Uh, Mr. Suresh Kumar has the first hand experience of working in the uh, rescue, uh, re uh, re uh, rescue works of uh, Kanyakumari district when Oki uh, hit the district. And uh, as uh, sir was uh, telling, that each and uh, the the policies, the work should reach the last individual in the country. I was reminded of uh, Pandit Dindayal Ubadhyaya's uh, uh, integral humanism and his philosophy of Andhyodaya, that only when the policies, really when the efforts taken in the uh, uh, taken by the government uh, reach the last person in the society, that will be the that will cause the. Uh, the, uh, the only the only then there will be the success of our policies and uh, my uh, policies and uh, working in the ground level is always important and uh, mr suresh kumar sir is an example of how one should work in the ground level and uh, thank you so much sir for uh, sharing your experience and expertise with us now uh, let me uh, invite uh, dr kv jayshri ma'am uh, to dare offer her felicitations ma'am please Ma'am? Ah, yes. Namaste and I extend a cordial welcome to all the dignitaries and participants to the fourth session of ongoing webinar series, Disaster Resilient India 2030, jointly organized by OFC an FAC of Shayapa College for Women and Disaster Management and Rehabilitation Trust. Today's topic in this webinar series is cyclone and coastal erosion. So India is a geocultural region that spreads about 7,000 and 75,000, uh, 7,516.6 kilometers and the coastal erosion is the wearing away of land and removal of beach sediments by high winds, drainage, wave action, wave currents, and tidal currents. It is a natural process, but the rate at which the erosion is happening has accelerated over the past few decades due to anthropogenic activities. The combined effect of human activities and natural environment changes make the coastal dynamic action lose balance in the coastal process, resulting in loss of sediments in the coastal zone, leading to a coastline retreat and beach erosion. At present, coastal erosion is very common. About 75 percentage of the sandy coast worldwide is marked as eroded. The anthropogenic activities, that is a migration of population, industrial exploitation for space, water and manpower, mineral mining, multiple number of health centers along coastline, etc. And moreover, it is a favorite area for tourism and recreation worldwide. The zone can boom economically, but at the same time, this area progressively receding worldwide, making the zone fragile, vulnerable, and unstable. Coastal erosion destroys 
the beach biodiversity and ecological balance and has direct or indirect harm on human life and natural environment so the coastal erosion has changed from natural environmental change to a serious hazard as regarding this cyclone as po uh, pointed out by vinod menon sir our nation is subjected to devastating effects of cyclone frequently and as rightly pointed out by suresh kumar sir all the natural disasters are common to all nation without reference to political structure region religion caste economic status etc and the intensity of loss depends upon how we manage it before it occurs the heavy rains associated with the cyclones leads to flooding of inland area land subsidence land mudslides which has further impact on human infrastructure crop vegetation and livestock etc cyclones coupled with the tides and local coastal erosions can cause saline water erosion today dr ram mohan is with us to give more details about the topic i on behalf of the organizing team extend our gratitude to you sir for joining with us to share your knowledge views and thoughts and i extend good luck to the program and all the participants thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am now uh, we are moving on to the technical session of the day and we have uh, professor dr b ramohan uh, department who who served in the department of geology university of madras in the gindi campus chennai with us today uh, the professor ramohan's areas of specialization are environmental geosciences geochemistry in the uh, engineers and metamorphic petrology application of remote sensing and gis in earth resource management and studies on nat natural hazards and disaster management here we have an erudite personality who has got, who has done many research and consultancy projects uh, the list is very long i will just uh, mention a, a, a few of them environmental monitoring in gulf of kambar for establishing oil production facility uh, annual environmental monitoring of py3 oil production facility of uh, trimulai vas in nagapatnam district magnetic survey to locate uh, anthracite deposit deposit near uh, kiranur pudukote district and feasibility studies for use as dimensional stone palava granites and the list goes on and uh, professor rabohan has also served in uh, many committees contributing uh, his due to the uh, service of uh, uh, the uh, of the nation he was the dean in charge uh, university industry interaction center university of madras uh, member of committee to prepare the guidelines from uh, of uh, for tsunami uh, uh, hazard uh, constituted by ndma new delhi he was the member of the committee to draft the standard operation procedure for terrorist attack using biological chemical and nuclear agents for government of tamil nadu resource person for training programs on disaster disaster management in anna institute of management government of tamil nadu since 2007 professor ramohan has also contributed to the development of many students uh, through guiding many mphil dissertations and uh, phd thesis and he has uh, contributed to the academia through uh, 56 uh, research papers published in international journals and 36 papers published in national journals and uh, he has attended many conferences both overseas and uh, india and he has organized many uh, co co conferences of this sort too and he has got membership in, in many academic bodies and he has visited many foreign countries for the collaborative programs and it is our fortune to have uh, dr v ramohan with us today to enlighten us on the topic of coastal erosion so the platform is yours thank you i think uh, my presentation I will be so you can start sharing now please leave the yeah. sharing option again chat it's it's in the background uh, yes sir it's there it's there now yeah yes you can start the slide show sir yeah uh, good afternoon to everybody i am not going to specifically address the names uh, uh, but i should recall my association with the uh, 
Honorable Vinod Manan sir, we were uh, associated in the drafting of the guidelines for tsunami in uh, NDMA. That's how I got uh, associated with them. Uh, so it's a pleasure seeing him. We are not meeting anyhow. <laughs> it's uh, in the video conference. So uh, I will have enough time to cover uh, only coastal erosion. So I thought uh, I can talk about uh, cyclone disaster at a later date. That's what uh, we talked about in the, to Suresh Kumar, Mr. Suresh Kumar. So today it will be mainly on the coastal erosion and particularly coastal erosion is very important um, for Tamil Nadu and uh, the state of, uh, I mean district of uh, uh, Kanyakumari in particular. So, So the problem today we face is the natural hazards is they are increasing, particularly the hydrometeorological hazards are increasing. And uh, unfortunately, uh, man has extended his uh, activities, uh, settlements, housing, as well as um, industries in disaster areas which will be affected by disasters. So the growth of population is also taking um, um, unbelievable dimension. And as a result, the coastal area is being uh, encroached. I, I can say it's only encroached. See, what is happening, you know, in Puttanthurai, uh, we are having uh, houses at a distance of 16 meters from high tide. In Manwala Kurchi, a factory is situated 42 meters from the low tide. I'm not, I'm not able to clearly demarcate the high tide. So when you say about the high tide, it should be around 20, 25 meters, that's all. So we are in a very bad shape and uh, a college is situated in Karadu for at a distance of 200 meters. And that college was affected in the tsunami, but still, the developments are taking place. They are constructed a hostel in the um, surrounding area and they're not realized the disaster proneness of that particular coast. Likewise, you have houses at a distance of 30 meters from the coast in Chennai. These are some of the issues which we should realize. People are not realizing the danger they continue to live in the disaster prone area. That's a main problem. So when you talk about the coastal erosion or shoreline changes or inundation of the land by the sea, there are several ca causes. One is what we see every day is wind and wave action. Wind causes the wave action. And then you have the tidal action. Unfortunately, we don't have that problem in Tamil Nadu because the tidal amplitude is very low here, uh, less than 50 centimeters. Whereas you will have the problem in uh, uh, the Sundarban area as you go north in the Sundarban and uh, Gulf of Kambat. Uh, so you have tidal action also influencing the uh, shoreline. Uh, near shore currents and sediment source. Sediment source is very important. The sediment should come to the sea and then only the beach can be built. So you have currents which transport the sediments. Storms and extreme events sometimes they have a lasting impact. Sometimes the changes which may, are made by these storms are irreversible. But under rare circumstances, the earth process is able to regain the original configuration, but very rarely it becomes, uh, even, you know, you know, the, we lost the Nishkodi, but now it has been regained by the natural process. The tectonic subsidence and uplift, it can also affect. And then you have the sea level rise. This is a challenge the community is facing in the coastal area. The sea level is rising because of the global warming and the warming results in the melting of the glaciers, 
which increase the quantity of water in the seas, the thermal expansion of the water due to temperature, it also results in the rise in sea level. So these are all some of the factors which are responsible for the um, change in shoreline. Uh, and uh, when you come to the human influence, uh, uh, we have the sand mining in the beach and the riverbed. In the, what is happening in the beach is you, you lose the beach. When you're doing it in the riverbed, you're stopping the supply of the sand to the ocean or the near shore. Then sediment input reduction due to construction of dams, barges in the rivers. This is a very important issue. There are instances where several hundreds of square kilometer of land has been lost because the coast is not receiving the sediments to build its shore. Then construction of backwaters and jetties, piers, this is a big issue because we, particularly people in Kanyagumari, they should be knowing the ill effects of these coastal constructions. And, and once you start this coastal constructions, then you have the shore at, uh, erosion and you have to protect the shore. So shore protection structures, are they really protecting? It's a big question. They are not protecting. They are only degrading the shore further. Dynamics, when you talk about the process which is responsible for the um, uh, building up of this shore, we have the longshore currents. We call what is called the longshore currents. This is caused when the waves encounter the coast at an oblique angle. And they go up like this. They override the shore and then they return perpendicular in a perpendicular direction to be picked once again by the second wave, which takes it further. So there is a zigzag movement and the net movement is like this. We call it as a direction of drift. Driftward movement, down drift movement. So millions of um, Tons of sand are being transported along the coast for ever. In India, what happens is, in, in Indian subcontinent, what happens is, the movement of the sediments or the longshore currents is not in one direction. It gets reversed during the northeast monsoon when uh, what is called the ITC is it intertropical convergence zone. It moves southward. Then you have the northeast monsoon, and during the three months, the movement is in general in Tamil Nadu, in the Bay of Bengal and Gulf Coast. The movement of the sediment is towards north. So any structure which is put up trapping this sediment will lead to the accumulation of sediments in the south of the structure. And because the area north of the structure is not getting the sediments, but sediment of being removed from there, you get erosion. That is what is happening in the Bay of Bengal coast. In the Park Bay, what happens is the wave strikes at a direction perpendicular to the coast. So there is no longshore current. The Gulf of Manar, there is an anti-clockwise current coming from the Sri Lanka. So that creates another cell. It takes more time for 
to explain all these things. But that is very important because that particular current supplies some sediments to west coast. See, the coast should be built up by the sand which is coming from uh, the rivers, through the rivers to the coast. You have abundant rivers in the east coast bordering the Bay of Bengal. So beaches and dunes complexes are well formed in the Bay of Bengal coast. That is, I'm talking from Vedaranyam to further north. Whereas, if you take the case of uh, the Park Bay and Gulf of Manar, in Gulf of Manar, you have only one major river, that is Tamraparni. And in the Gulf, uh, you have uh, Bella, Ragniar and other things in the Park Bay. They are very small rivers. Tamraparni, we can say, is a large river. Whereas in the Arabian Sea coast of Tamil Nadu, you don't have major rivers. So there is no sediment input. And here this current is towards north. In the west coast, the, the current is moving towards north. That means in Kanyagumari in particular, in the land's end, sand is being transported always towards north. So whatever small amount of sand comes, it is being taken away. We try to do some sampling of uh, sediments in the Kanyakumari uh, near shore. We never got any sediments. We could get only small amount of the biogenic debris, calcareous debris. So, we have an inherent problem in Kanyagumari coast where you have very low sediment load, sediment getting dumped into the ocean. At the same time, this sand, whatever is coming, is being transported away. Whatever we are getting in Kanyagumari is a leaked sediment coming from the Tamraburni river system, that cell. It's a very complex situation. So, and a very unfavorable situation also. So there's another thing is that you have a variation in the summer profile and winter profile. In the winter, the, uh, go back to the previous slide. Go back to the previous slide, yeah. So in the winter, there's more erosion. You'll see that the sea is very close by. Um, next. Yeah, that's it. So, the coast is eroded, the sea advances landward, and it removes the sand and gets it dumped here as a sandbar. But this erosion is not permanent because during summer, it is gently pushed back to the same place. This happens even during a, a <coughs> fortnight, during the um, New moon and full moon, there's more erosion. And during the uh, neap tide, the configuration is regained. Next. And these are all certain cycles which take place. That is, you know, daily, weekly cycles uh, or fortnightly cycles. And then you have the annual cycle. So you have, then we are coming to the type of uh, erosion which is taking place. So we we'll just just see a few slides about what is happening in the west coast and uh, east coast. East coast is essentially a sandy coast, whereas the west coast you have an escarpment. The uplift of the Indian subcontinent along the west coast fault has resulted in the formation of a steep cliff. Uh, you have the cliff to coast. You have that cliff to coast in Ratnagiri in the basaltic rocks and you have the sedimentary rocks and the laterites in Varkala which represent this um, southern part and then we have some uh, 10 meter high uh, cliffs, very small low cliffs in uh, Valinokam in Ramnathburam district. So these are all also 
a systematic retreat of the uh, cliff is taking place. This is the configuration of the original cliff. The wave action causes uh, uh, a notch here, and this notch here, the, the rock gets uh, collapsed, and the cliff retreats. So this is uh, happening here, here, and we have to protect the coast. And it's not going to be protected. You are just going to control it for some time, but you will definitely lose the material. Next. This is what I've explained. And um, we have a 1,500 long coast in West Arabian coast, which is having a cliff to coast. Next. Next, please. Yeah. So this is a hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and solution. So the salts are dissolved and taken away. Uh, rocks hit against one another, um, uh, reducing the size. Abrasion takes place in the sand and pebble with the water splash on the rock. And then hydraulic action when the rock, the wave forces, uh, splashes against the wall or the cliff, uh, the wall, air packet in the cracks, they expand and causes the sort of an explosion. Hydraulic fracturing takes place. Okay, next. Next. Yeah. Now we come to the sea level rise, global warming. And uh, global warming is not only going to rise the sea level, but also increase the sea surface temperature and the possibility of the formation of a cyclone. And also that we have, um, when the temperature rises, the land is going to absorb the heat and radiate it back, whereas the sea is going to absorb it and retain it because of its latent heat. So as a result, the mid-continental region is heated and the sea is also heated, but not to that extent. The rise in temperature is much higher in the mid-continental region. So as a result, to make up the difference in the pressure, the wind starts blowing. And this causes what is called the waves. It's also going to have cause evaporation, more evaporation and our water, surface water bodies are going to uh, reduce in volume. That is another problem which we, we talk about when talk about the water resource. So higher amplitude waves, waves, wave height increase because of the wind, it can cause erosion. And uh, rising sea level combined with increasing erosion in coastal defenses. What are the coastal defenses? The natural coastal defenses like dunes and other things. And when extreme event takes place, the coastal defense will be reduced in size. You have a big sand dune, but during your storm, its height can be reduced so that it can easily inundate. Next. And this is a rise in temperature. And this results in the sea level rise. We are um, having a raise to up to point uh, uh, eight degrees centigrade. Uh, we had the phenomena well recognized from 1998. Uh, 1988, 98 was a year when uh, the sea surface temperature was two degrees above normal 60, 63, uh, 60 average. And 90% um, of the corals died of bleaching in Maldives and the coral bleaching was reported almost throughout the world from uh, uh, Lakshadweep to Andaman and other places. Next. Next, yeah. This is the sea level rise. When you take into consideration the sea level from the tide gauge recordings in the earlier stages, but now it is satellite based uh, uh, measurement. From 1870 to 2000, 
the sea level rise was estimated as 1.7 mm per year but you take the case of 1993 to present or uh, this is from up to 2010 the change is 3.26 mm per year that means the sea level rise has been accelerated and it is rising the rate itself is rising and in in another 10 years you will have 4 mm and more like that it keeps on rising so we are and when the sea level rises erosion is going to be a definite effect next yeah this is just uh, look at what has happened in the past we always look into what has happened in the past to infer what is going to happen in future because you know there are many many estimates or anticipation or models which show what is going to happen but how this is going to happen whether the earth is going to absorb some of this uh, carbon dioxide we do not know we are uh, people are talking about um, um co2 rise no now ocean is absorbing the co2 that means the atmospheric co2 is not going to uh, raise at the rate which we modeled earlier because we are not taking into consideration the efficiency of the ocean to absorb the co2 and now there is another dimension is that the ocean ph is increasing reducing as a result the carbonate which is in the ocean will be released so this is a very complex situation but with a positive feedback and negative feedback positive feedback it is one which enhances the effect for example if you have um, um increase in heat there is going to be more forest fire and forest fire will cause more additional co2 and more warming but at the same time warming will increase the cloud cover and the cloud cover is going to prevent the entry of the um uh, radiation or uh, insulation budget of the earth so that's a negative feedback so during the cretaceous the temperature was something around 10 degrees above present day what has happened then? next next the many of these areas the blue colored areas are the parts of the world india was here so these were covered by the inundated by the ocean the land was only uh much much smaller but what happened in india we can see in the next tamil nadu we can see in the next uh, slide next slide yeah this is what is happening we have the sedimentary rocks exposed on the surface today in the along the continental margin and the limit of this arrowhead shows the definite limit of the sea during 125 million years back so it has gone the sea level has probably was higher by 200 meters than present and the lot of areas have been inundated so we are sure that the sea level rise is going to have uh, we are going to lose a lot of land and that comes with erosion next but what is happening in the past uh, half a million year is that we have some temperature maximums here and uh, this is 130 215 kilo years 1000 years and then we have a 8000 years before present one peak which is hidden okay anyhow it doesn't matter and uh, the temperature was something around 4 degrees above the present sea level and here it was mid holocene 8000 years before present it was 
two meter above mean sea level. Next, this is from the Antarctica ice core records, and you can see that there are uh, there is a spindle shaped structure which is called the strand line. We call it in a geological sense a strand line. These are ridges of sand. Normally, when you find in a beach a dune ridge forming in the coast, and whenever the sea was there up to that particular level, is ridge form. But the sea, when it receded, successive ridges were formed. This is how this ridge plain was forming. It's about 120-25 kilometers inland. And you can see some of the next, next slide, the dunes which are two kilometers inland in Tirchoburam in Kadalur uh, near Chidambaram. So that means these are all with marine shells we have. So the sea has entered inland to a distance of twelve kilometers a year, but it's more in a weather in area. It sea was there up to Tirthapundi, that is twenty five kilometers inland. That has happened probably in 115,000 years before present, when the sea level was higher than present by about 12 meters. This is what is happening. And then we have the 8,000 year uh, or 6,000 year uh, uh, Middle Lucian uh, 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 thermal maxima. The sea, uh, what happened is, this is a limit at 115,000 years, 1,50,000 years back, and the sea su successively went down, going down to about 200 meters below the present during its glaciation, and then it started rising. And when it started rising, it destroyed the coast which has formed. A two degree rise in temperature is formed what is called the wetlands, which are present all along the coast. The wetlands today we have are the result of the sea water incursion during the mid Holocene. So that is a rise in sea level. That's going to happen. And next, next, next slide. I'm not able to operate the slide. Uh, next day is just, okay, next, previous, previous, previous. Yeah, here you can see some of the relic strand lines, ridges, next. Yeah, these are the relic strand lines. This area had a similar configuration and the whole area has been destroyed because of the inundation of the sea, which happened something around 5,000 years back. The Midolocene rise was um, 8,000 to 5,000 years before present, and the peak was something around 6,000 years. So this is weather in area, and uh, you should be also knowing that these areas are uh, about two meters above the MSL. So any rise in sea level, we are going to lose these lands. Let's see. Another information we get from this elevation data. This is elevation data. You see that um, color, green color, a mild green color is zero to one meter. So these are all the areas it will be affect next. And uh, I've shown for the entire next, next slide. Next slide, please. I'm not able to operate this slide. Sir, that. it is because uh, the screen which we see now is shared by Suresh Kumar, sir. Oh, okay, okay. I think we are gone a little more, okay. Right on. Tectonic subsidence and sea level. Yeah, this is the whatever is shown in green color. This is going to be affected when there is a one meter rise in sea level. You should realize that a, 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 according to a calculation, which is of, often disputed, um, a 10 centimeter rise in sea level 
will inundate 15 meter of land. That's according to what is called the Brun's rule. According to Brun's rule, uh, 10 centimeter rise in sea level will affect or inundate a road 15 meter lengthwise. So, uh, and another thing is, these are the areas where you have the mangroves, amphibian, crustaceans, and corals. So, uh, there's going to be a big uh, change in the uh, ecosystem. Uh, land is going to be lost and people are going to be refugees looking for uh, uh, suitable places to live. That's going to happen. Only Trump is uh, uh, not accepting that sea level is rising. Temperature global, uh, all other have started realizing. We were also disputing at a particular time, but after 1998, we realized, but the climate change has come to stay. Next. Next slide. Next slide, please. Maybe. Next yes, slide. Yes, yeah. Yeah. We are talking about the uh, subsidence. It could be tectonic or in some instances, some of the mega cities are located in uh, um, river mouths or delta, sorry. And the deltas are receiving, have been receiving a lot of sediments. And these sediments are getting compacted. Another thing is that we are drawing excess water for our uh, daily use. As a result, there is a depressurization and the compaction going on. As a result, the deltas are sinking. In addition, you have, may have a tectonic subsidence, which also can impart lowering of the ground level. Look at the sea level changes recorded in the tide gauges. You find the Diamond Harbor in West Bengal records a 5.16 Kandla. It records a 3.18 mm per year, much more than the accelerated sea level rise. If you look into what is happening in the last 10, 15 years, this value will be much more. Whereas, you know, Chennai, Mumbai, pra, Parade, Uchi, the, uh, the, uh, the change in sea level is lesser. So the sea level is rising. The tide gauge is rising. And if there is a subsidence, this rise will increase. So rise in sea level, more than the uh, rise, in, uh, if the tide gauge records a rise more than the actual sea level rise, then the area is going undergoing subsidence. Next. Next slide. Yes, sir. More. So as a result, what is happening in the Sundarbans is areas which are shown as red are erosion. Two islands we already lost, and we are lost around 163 square kilometers erosion. But see, 80 square kilometers has been added in the uh, on the northern side of the islands, and uh, overall reduction is um, land area is uh, uh, lesser, not on 63. Because of the delta outbuilding, but here the problem is that tides are removing the uh, sediments because the tidal range in Sudabans is uh, roughly about eight meter. In Gulf of Kambath, it is ten meters during the uh, new moon, whereas in Sundaban it is eight meters, if I remember correctly. Okay, anyhow. I not referred to it recently. And particularly Sagar Island, which is the largest island, it's eroding much more than it is adding. 
Okay, here yeah, this is a Sagar Island, the largest one, the home of several thousands of people. Next. Yes, sir. More. Sea level rise, which have been recorded by the um, uh, what is called the satellites, uh, Topex and uh, um, Poseidon uh, and Jason, uh, you find that um, uh, you have uh, uh, lesser sea level rise. Uh, in the west coast, Arabian Sea, that's the southern side, whereas uh, the sea level rise is more on the uh, east coast. So, sea level rise and sea level are not uniform. Now, everybody thinks the water occupies the same level, but it's not true. Because it, the sea level is altered by the gravity. The gravity is not constant in the earth. It varies from place to place. Accordingly, you have some changes in the gravity. If you have more gravity in this area, you will have more or lesser gravity in this area. This is because of the accumulation of the Bengal fan sediments. Low density Bengal fan sediments reduce the gravity in this region. So the water level will be less here and water level will be more here where you have a higher gravity. So don't think that the sea level is constant throughout the world. It varies from place to place. So if you say the sea level is going to rise, the impact is not going to be uniform. We have to take into consideration probably the Kanyakumari is a better place when compared with Nagapatna because the sea level rise is lesser here, Kanyakumari, when compared with Nagapatna. Next. Yeah, next. Yeah, next. 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 We're going forward. Next. Backward. Yes, yeah, now you can see that there's a 32% erosion in West Bengal, in uh, 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 the Parganas, and uh, Midinapur is a better place. Next. This is done by um, National. Uh, previously, it was um, ICMAM. Uh, okay, uh, Integrated uh, Coastal and Marine Area Management Project Directed. Okay, next. Next. Yeah, this is uh, impact of extreme events. Extreme events and destroy the coast, um, sometimes making it irreversible. And uh, this is what happened in uh, some other country, Australia during a storm. And this is going to, this is what has happened in uh, Valyatura in Kerala. So you can't, uh, uh, I'm sure this is, it's going to take a very long time to uh, regain the original position. Next. This is what is happening now. We go to the Nile River, which is the best example for, uh, uh, sediment trapping by the uh, dams. You have some studies which are made. This is original uh, limit of the promontory. You can see that uh, uh, in 1945, uh, the land was up to here. And uh, over a period of 150 years, a number of uh, barges, uh, small dams have been constructed in nine. 1964, the Aswan High Dam was constructed. As a result, this is 1964, it will be somewhere in between the red and these two. So the coast has retreated by several, at least two, three, two, three kilometers. The enormous amount of, and now they have got a seawall to protect it. But and there are many, many more uh, uh, problems that are associated with the Jaswan Dam. The salinity in the Mediterranean increased. As a result, fisheries were affected. What was, I, 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 I vaguely remember the uh, fish catch was uh, reduced by one tenth. If they are getting 3,000 tonnes a day, they end up in 300 tonnes a day. That's what uh, 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 one port figure 
uh, it gives like that. So large dams are very bad. We should not try to alter the e e e um, ecology in a big way. It's always bad. Next. I don't know what was the influence of uh, the construction of uh, the um, uh, Grand Anakit by uh, uh, Karigal Shodan on the um, Kaveri Delta ecosystem. That is always a big question mark for me. Because, you know, he diverted the water to the Kolirum or Kolidam. From Kaveri, he diverted the water to Kolidam. And Kolidam, as it, it was, uh, water was flowing with a tremendous force during the floods, it eroded fast, making a deep channel. And today you have a very broad river in Kolidam. And the widening has been caused probably during the past 1,500 years because of the diversion of the flood. Whereas the river in other the distributaries, they are reduced to small size. And definitely there is some changes which are taking place in the Coloran River estuary. We can see. But altogether, that's a different topic. Anyhow. So impact, now we come to the human impact. And um, 150 years uh, uh, back, uh, the Madras Harbour was uh, uh, constructed. The backwaters of the Madras Harbour was completed. That formed a beautiful beach, second largest beach in Marina. But Marina was not there that wide 150 years back. It's an added, accreted zone. Whereas, the Raiburam area and um, Enur area that eroded. 20 years back, we had a temple in the midst of the, the sea. The Kashi Vishwanatha temple of uh, um, the Enur was in the sea. Thiruvathyu, right? If you remember correctly, it should be part of Thiruvathyu, was in the sea. And uh, now you don't have that because it is completely washed out. And we can see in the recent years, in 1998, a port was constructed in a place called Kartupalli, north of Chennai, near Yenur, uh, north of Yenur. And you see the accretion here. And uh, then you have in 2010, a shipbuilding yard was constructed. Because the two facilities are side by side. The problem here was not uh, significant. And uh, whereas the north of that, you know, by erosion, nearly 200 meters of uh, coast has been destroyed. So, I think we should always have this uh, uh, identify areas where you don't have any habitations and have our facilities, a number of facilities in the same area so that, you know, the community is not uh, uh, affected. But if you have 20 ports in Kanyagumari district, then everywhere you will have problems. So, I'll have, I'll have the ports in one place so that a singular area is affected and the other area is not affected. Anyhow, that's a different story. So beach nourishment has been taken up and uh, I mean there was a proposal to take up beach nourishment. We did some studies and uh, modeling to find out uh, how far it will be successful. Then it went for EAA clearance. Uh, they had some problem with the EAA. So they couldn't do it, but by the time I came out of that uh, particular, uh, I will retire, okay? So the coastal protection structures, you know. We have been thinking of, um, I mean, we have been doing some field work and we found that there's a, a, a pier 
Uh, I, I think the first information was from Puducherry. Everybody knows, I think, uh, Puducherry is a popular uh, tourist destination and uh, there's a lot of erosion taking place in Puducherry. People always connect it with the harbor which is constructed in 19, uh, after independence, I don't know exact year, but the problem started not in after independence, but well before independence. In 1735, the French colonizers constructed a seawall to prevent the erosion because they had a pier in the for the berthing the ships. And we have a. I found. I I, I also noticed there is a pier near the Dutch fort of Tarangambadi, and the one which is here. I, I got it from the internet, uh, posted by this lady. Okay, so you can even now you can go and see that the brick uh, made fear is there, and this is a temple which has been affected by erosion. Okay, so then we are talking about the Pumbuha. We have erosion there also. It was there before the construction of the fishing harbor. Is it due to port activity during the Sangam period? And how about the last of six short temples in uh, uh, Mamallapuram? Is it due to a port activity in Pallava period? We, we can't get any answer for this, but it's possible. Anything you do in the sea, will have a negative impact. And this is uh, uh, a place, uh, Sinawasubaram, I'm, 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 but I really doubt whether it is Sinawasubaram. Anyhow, that doesn't matter, but I'm showing only people are living like this. And this is uh, Vembar village, uh, near Vembar village coast, and you see the road is affected. This is because of construction of the uh, grinds and uh, harbor jetties, okay? So, drift is trapped by the sediments. Now we are coming to the Kanyagumari coast. We can see some of the mistakes done by the people. There is no harbor here. But there is one groin here. And this is trapping the sediments. So, the longshore current is like this. Then what you should do is you should trap the sediment here so that you can have a harbor here. Next. But what has been done? Next. This is a photo taken in uh, 2007. And now, instead of putting up a breakwater like this, they have put it like this. I read a particular uh, uh, statement in one of the Reports. Previous one, please. Previous slide. Previous, yeah. Okay, that the construction of the beach protection structures is a scandal. They know pretty well that they need to spend our, it's milking a cow, it's a golden duck. It will keep on giving them revenue and work. That's what they say. So what they did is instead of putting a work breakwater, I am not an expert. I am just looking at a common man and using a little bit of my reasoning. Okay, I am not an engineer. I am sorry. And uh, see, they have put up a structure like this. And what is going to happen is that this is going to trap the sediment. But they have put another smaller trap here. Then this area is getting filled up. And we are getting, uh, uh, this is, uh, I think there's some problem. Okay, anyhow, it doesn't matter that they have um, sediment is being dredged to remove the sand. Next. That is in 2007, they did the same mistake, you know, 2011, 
uh, you have this uh, sand accumulation taking place in the. That's what I'm telling you. That is in the west coast, east coast, sediment is moving like this towards north. In the east coast, I mean uh, west coast, the uh, sediment is moving like this. So there's nothing left in Kanyakumari. There are no major river excepting the Kuitare River or Tam. I think they also call it as Tamra Burni. And uh, yes. Yes. which uh, flows, and that's not a mighty river. So no sediment supply, but then the sediment dispersal is there constantly. Some coral debris and uh, these shell fragments are accumulating along with a small amount of sand. See, this is happening, and here they have put up a not a very clear picture, but anyhow, the same thing. But the it is not forming a harbor, but it's forming a beach. The same mistake, you know, the breakwater is like this. Now they have put it like this, such that it becomes a bottleneck. Yet they have sanctioned 1.6 crores for dredging. This year, the, uh, the port, I mean, the harbor authorities asked for three crores. And uh, the cost of this uh, Tengapatnam uh, harbor is uh, 67 crores. They have been continuously spending money on dredging. So, the contractors are making money. Next. And designers have helped them. So this is the final thing now. The Tangapatnam, this is Tangapatnam and this is the uh, Mullur Turai and in between I got this from a net. Uh, so we have some erosion. And this size of this earlier, they were putting very large ones. That's also bad. They should put only small ones. For my reasoning, as a technical person, I can't uh, dispute it. I mean, non-technical person, I can't dispute it. But many cases, what they put is very long trap so that more sediment is trapped on one side. When more sediment is trapped on one side, the other side is going to have erosion. Next, please. And I think uh, we can skip this. Geology Survey of India has undertook a um, program. They found an 12 Tamil Nadu beaches, the shoreline is eroded with sea entering the mainland, ranging from 15 meters to half a kilometer in few stretches for the past four decades. So 1.6 crore has allotted for the dredge, uh, 64,640 meter cube of silt is accumulated in Tengapatnam Harbor. Next. The construction of, and then we come to the erosion due to mining. Uh, we are we are not uh, able to say much about the mining activity for the beach sands in um, Kanyagumari district. How far? Because I think um, um, they should be doing it uh, judiciously. The amount of uh, uh, heavy minerals are not um, much. As long as the material which is removed is put back, it's not a big, a big issue. But when it comes to the Gulf of Manar, people have been illegally mining uh, the um, limestone for uh, the regular uh, use. We have 24 uh, coral islands. We call them the Tutukudin group and the Vembar group, Kelakara group and the Manar group. And of the four ones, the one Tivu, which is in the southernmost, very close to uh, Tutukurin is uh, and uh, you have already some uh, uh, loss of island. Next. We can see the uh, changes taking place in the uh, one island uh, right from 2005 to 2020. We can see that's a long one here and um, some change in direction was there in 2000 but in 2013 it was split into two and uh, then uh, south uh, northwestern part disappeared and it's no longer present and what i heard is that there's no documentation of the uh, actually what has happened what i heard was that 
somehow this island uh, had uh, uh, this juli flora odamaram uh, something like that the thorny bush uh, which is prevalent everywhere you know in uh, tamil nadu that juli flora uh, uh, got uh, grown here and um, to preserve the uh, indigenous uh, vegetation they removed the juli flora and when they removed the juli flora erosion started what has happened earlier is that the original vegetation was replaced by the juli flora and uh, it continued the binding of the soil but our people when they removed it the binding was removed so the land was eroded so that is what has happened so we have an example of erosion due to mining uh, all the reports say that the indiscriminate mining of limestone is the cause of the loss of uh, one tivu next next and you have the mangroves which cause the coastal defense uh, mangrove roots they trap the sediments and uh, when the waves strike they reduce the wave energy thereby um, preventing the erosion so mangrove are uh, very useful next and um, we have talk talked about the uh, natural and uh, uh, human induced causes of uh, the shoreline change and uh, um, as in the case of the andaman you have the tectonic subsidence has clearly brought out that the forests have drowned uh, in some places Uh, you can see water. Uh, yeah. Now we can estimate the shoreline. This is one study which has been conducted by Manohar Manyam Sundarnar University. We have the satellite data. The way of using the satellite data, you can get the paleo shoreline, past shoreline. They have used three shorelines: nineteen ninety nine to two thousand, two thousand five to two thousand six, and two thousand ten to two thousand eleven. And they have shown wherever you have. Uh, In 2005, there's a lot of erosion, and here, in this zone, there is accretion in 2005. That is the Mutam area. So this is how they estimate the. I, I, I think using the remotely sensed data, now you have got an option to work in any area. You're sitting in Delhi. You wanted to. The minister wants to know what is going to happen. It need not ask the people uh, what is going to um, get the ground proof. Now they can as well get it. Get the satellite data and try to infer what is happening. So these are all some uh, uh, modern technologies. This work has been done by Manohar Sundarnar University. Um, I took the liberty of uh, uh, getting the uh, material for your benefit. Next, and this is what is happening. These are the areas which are undergoing erosion. Uh, Tenga Petnam, this going erosion. You have alternate villages like uh, Putanthurai and uh, Midalam going uh, undergoing uh, uh, accretion. Uh, Midalam, I think. Um, I think I have next. Uh, I can show you in the next one. Next slide. Next. Yeah, the, whatever is shown in green, these villages are undergoing uh, accretion and. Uh, On the whole, okay. Within this also, there could be accretion somewhere and erosion somewhere, okay. But in general, there's accretion here in these villages and in these villages you have, and you have to watch them. Next. And uh, this another study which has been made in Kadalu district by us. We have used uh, several uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and said data with the different resolutions: 60 meters, 63, 30, 15, and um, 30 meter resolution. And using this data, next, next, please. Yeah. Yes. Please. Yeah. Huh? 
next uh, previous one now you have the baseline we create a baseline and then you have a transect and then you have um, different shore lines the software it's uh, called digital uh, shoreline analysis system which is uh, uh, integrated with uh, arcgis and uh, this is how it measures and uh, from this it measures the position of the shore lines and along each transect it uh, decides uh, what is going to be the erosion or accretion or the change next this is how it does its number of transects um, i mean you can draw transects every 10 meters you can draw it every 100 meters depending on the requirement that's all uh, in the done in the uh, computer um, next next yeah this is another method so there are two methods end point rate that is distance between the oldest and youngest shoreline is one the other one is a linear regression uh, the uh, the software calculates a regression along each transect these are all different position of six uh, shorelines and um, year so if they just go like this uh, you get a slope from the slope it calculates the actual um, uh, migration next so then when when it comes to katalur uh, wherever you have a high erosion more than 2 meters we have given uh, shown a red color this shows uh, this zone is is undergoing a uh, uh, high erosion this is going a uh, uh, moderate erosion or low erosion this is stable and this is a uh, uh, low er accretion so you can classify the coast into different levels next by epr method and you have by llr method linear uh, uh, regression rate uh, so you can also have construct uh, graphs like this giving uh, where you have the uh, erosion wherever you have the negative values it is erosion and here you have accretion this is done by my, my student for his phd work he did multi hazard mapping for kanaga uh, kadalu district next yeah this is for the entire coast you can see that uh, um, these areas are undergoing erosion and these areas are undergoing accretion much of the land is undergoing erosion so in general the kadalu coast is showing more erosion next and this is what's the summary you have high erosion and moderate erosion taking place low erosion erosion is dominant then you have the moderate acc accretion and low accretion and um, uh, moderate accretion next there's no uh, high accretion next and this is uh, what is uh, the status of uh, a uh, particular you have a small structure here you see a piled jetty see it's not completely sealing the movement of the wave but there are piles at regular interval regular interval you have piles and this jetty is there and uh, uh, it's an uh, if i remember correctly it's a intake uh, um, uh, pipe and because of the construction that what i'm telling is even a small obstruction for the long shore current will have an influence we are talking about a solid uh, uh, breakwater it has got uh, enormous influence but even a small piled jetty a jetty is resting on a pile it's open a small obstruction is there that can affect this is see here this same thing is here this is the view on top and this is the view in the bottom you see nobody will put a, a playground on the shore edge edge of the shore so definitely there is a lot of a, a erosion going on here so you can see the trees have been uprooted here and this is what is happening because of the obstruction what i am trying to convey is that even small obstruction can affect it because of the uh, kadalur uh, uh, breakwater somewhere here 
uh, you have erosion taking place here and very close to that place you have uh, this is a breakwater and uh, i think it's a jetty okay not a breakwater so you have erosion in the road taking place next so next and you have the college here these are all some of the habitations uh, these are all the recently added structures uh, previously these things were not there and uh, now uh, they have got a lot of funds to get development and they are going putting i would prefer to uh, um, stop all developments in the college and select another place where you can establish a college and face it out um, before the next uh, 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 disaster strikes next so and this is a summary of what is happening in tamil nadu india you have um, particularly south uh, southern states um, you have a big list of the entire country but i just concentrate on the southern states you have uh, more of erosion taking place in uh, uh, tamil nadu and um, kerala uh, 45% of the coast is eroding in kerala 41 51 is uh, eroding in puducherry of course uh, that's but the length is very small and this is 41% and uh, andhra pradesh and karnataka are better placed and uh, india is 33% of the coast is erosion and uh, stable is so on and um, uh, this is uh, i think if i remember correctly i don't know exactly i didn't put the reference anyhow sorry okay next and this is uh, uh, the erosion tamil nadu okay just to have an idea of what is happening and um, uh you have uh, tamil nadu and pondicherry uh, how many length of land which is lost this another uh, uh, study which was made in 2014 so there could be some difference between the studies but uh, overall in general we will have uh, um uh, uh some similarity in the results next and uh, you know we are talking about the area in square kilometers andhra pradesh is losing lot of land uh, more erosion taking place in a smaller area length so that becomes and west bengal is showing a very high uh, erosion nicobar is uh, uh, undergoing a lot of change so it's going to be very uh, alarming next so we have seen some structures like uh, groins um, breakwaters and um, sea wall which has been constructed and um, since this uh, time is uh, the running short of time i think i'll just rush through this the pdf of this will be available uh, for you to see and um, there are two type of uh, protection measures one is the hard and the other one is a soft one and um, uh, rock structures like revetment walls and breakwaters the traditional approach to shoreline uh, management protection against erosion they are the hard engineering solutions um but what happens is when the uh, uh you have the hard structures protecting the coast it can it protects the area where you have put the structure but elsewhere there is a um problem it creates negative effect on the adjacent beaches um and uh, they are more expensive and uh, next yes i i tried to do it man and sir uh, i got the uh, reference i mean got your uh, comment and i'll add it in the notes okay then you have the soft solutions one of the commonly adopted system is sand bypassing uh, then piling is also easy and done uh, different places i have seen the piles in uh, uh, pondicherry and uh, stabilizing the dunes but that is not actually the shore 
but it's a little inside the shore. Uh, sandbag fabric and uh, specialty products is another one uh, we should bear in mind. Um, still has a negative you know, impact on the, the, even the soft engineering measures will have a negative impact on uh, the ecosystem. Next. Next. Yeah, this is one piling is done here. And then you have the geotubes, which are filled with water and sand mixture. This is one. And we have a drainage here, you know. They have a, <coughs> in, in moderately dipping, sloping beaches, we call this a deflecting beaches, not a flat beach, but one with a gentle slope. We can have a drainage and water can be drained from here by horizontal drainage elsewhere, not here. And see what happens is when water flows over tops, it carries along with its sediments. But when the water comes down, down dip, down slope, it carries the sediments. But if the water which is going as backwash is absorbed by this layer by reducing a hydrostatic head, by draining the water, water is allowed to infiltrate here. Part of the water which otherwise would have flowed back is made to flow like this or percolate down, thereby reducing amount of water flowing down slope. So that means it's not going to erode this area. Erode this slope. So this is another method. This is sand by passing. You have this structure is accumulating sand here. You are putting the sand back here. This is bypassing. Uh, nutrition is uh, bringing it from uh, uh, inside and putting it. So uh, uh, that beach nutrition. Next. Next. Yeah, this is another artificial reef. Uh, this is being attempted in many places. Uh, we have uh, uh, this being tried at Point Puducherry now, but they have this is submersible. Uh, reefs, these are all the structures which are used, a traditional ball reef on the layer cake reef ball unit and these things are dumped here. Uh, this forms a habitat for fishes. See, more than the shore protection, they are uh, giving niches for uh, fishes to uh, have a calm environment. Now we have a, a, a breakwater, submersible breakwater. This is original shore profile. Because of the uh, construction of this breakwater, the wave action is reduced. So the beach is accumulating. The beach shows here is two different beaches. Now, uh, the same beach, uh, uh, well, the two photographs of the same beach taken in different periods. This is in Dominican Republic. Uh, I took it as a next. So when you want to, this is what a summary rather, what has been said is that uh, shoreline changes, how it is done, caused and um, early civilization were uh, um, settled in uh, river delta. Um, and our forefathers were living in nature, utilize the rivers as the optimum level, migrating to safe areas, which are prone to geohazard. Whenever the area is affected by a hazard, what they did was they shifted to safe zones. But with the technological advancement and infrastructure development, we are not in a position to abandon our resources and migrate to other area. See, in those days we constructed a mud wall house, bringing mud from an adjoining area. And using the coconut palmera, we used the um, uh, a log and we had the uh, thatch uh, on it, thatch uh, roofing on it. So anytime you can abandon it, construct another one here, every year you are reconstructing it to make it better. But now you have concrete houses. You can't shift them, you can't abandon houses which cost to 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs. So your property has become a problem, a binding for you not to migrate. When you're looking for value, um, uh, 
uh, tsunami, people were mainly concentrating on abandoned uh, uh, settlements in the coastal areas because they know people would have abandoned the area because of a tsunami and looking for a tsunami like deposit sand sheet in the area so see settlements have been migrating whenever there was a problem to safe areas and now we are not able to do it next next and we are recklessly using the coastal resources you have a problem they put it seal it stop it and we are also doing a lot of modification on the natural system and we are altering the natural system and the climate change induced problem is also causing more force in the process what is important is that we should realize when counter measures are adopted the erosion problem becomes worse we are not rectifying a problem by taking a counter measure with the earth yet you can't tame the earth you have to live to its wishes next i think that's going to be the last slide next yeah next yeah. previous so the impossible solution is that let the coast erode we should migrate to safe areas that's what our forefathers did so there are three methods one is retreat menon sir knows it retreat accommodate protect these are the three methods by which you can escape from a coastal disaster oceanic disaster a disaster what is it you are going to follow retreat go out of the danger zone that's of course the best solution number 2 accommodate raise the level make the um protection strong strong and try to live third one is protect i'm sorry uh, raise your level so that the water you are escaping the water forces but i think for ocean this uh, accommodate is not going to help you because you know ocean is going to be very strong this is for only for flooding flood related hazard then protect is by all taking measures so we have to make a decision the best decision is you are getting a chance move out of the danger zone it's a hard solution but with the global climate change hanging it's like a democles sword on your head you have very low option as a geologist i always be believe that the process is more die efficient than the human so as a geologist i can give you only this solution an engineer can give a different type of solution what's the best solution you make your decision thank you uh thank you so much sir thank you
मेनन सर यस सुरेश सर कैन यू स्टॉप द स्क्रीन शेयरिंग ओ आई हैव टू स्टॉप है uh no sure i think that it's uh, uh, suresh sir is uh, sharing I'm this not handling it host is disabled <laughs> that's what i am getting i am not able to do anything <laughs> yeah mr suresh is uh, yes, suresh uh, suresh you got it yeah yeah oh, sir, can, you please, uh, can you please can you please stop the sharing sir okay okay no i uh, in a previous uh, anyway uh, yeah it's okay program i had a problem while mr so, suresh is uh, huh? you know changing the you know he is stopping the sharing yes 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 stop uh, stop the uh, sharing and uh, thank you so much sir it was very informative and uh, in fact it is disturbing to uh, the uh, people of kanyakumari district in particular and of course uh, with a long coastal line this is a concern of the state both the state of kerala and uh, tamil nadu and let's hope that uh, uh, at least now uh, I, I, we will be awakening to the uh, serious situation uh, we are in and as you told we should not try to tame the environment but the mistake is where uh, we are going we are trying to tame the environment thank you so much sir for this informative session and uh, we have couple of questions from uh, professor vinod nenan sir you might have noted that and uh, and one question was common uh, which we received overwhelming response in the youtube and then there was one question from jodi patel ma'am uh, on how to identify uh, the erosion and uh, the same question is asked uh, by professor vinod nenan sir uh, with new technologies in geo informatics and uh, um, robotics augmented reality virtual reality can uh, coastal erosion be mapped better with improved digital analysis analytics yeah definitely it can, it can, anything can be made better you know uh, now uh, what has been done by um um uh, previously it was called a uh, ecma uh, sir you remember what is the nc nc that integrated coastal management uh, what is to do sir institute for coastal management ha uh, ha yeah they do the bathymetry studies yeah yeah, yeah. so that institute has done with the cartosat uh, data um, with a resolution of 1 uh, uh, meter uh, and they also done uh, using the uh, field collected data so they they go along the field and regularly Uh, collect the shoreline position, and there are a lot of methods by which uh, the um, results can be better identified. But whatever happens, you know, at at the time of field work or any moment, something happening. But that's not the permanent. Sea is a dynamic zone. See, if you go the next day, it will be different. It keeps changing. All, all the time you know because wind speed changes every day you can't predict wind change wind speed yeah so, professor ramohan uh, uh, you know you mentioned uh, retreat adapt and protect protect yeah. uh, you know the uh, ecosystem sustainable solutions yeah. would be to also look at uh, adopting and adapting yeah. you know adopting good practices and adapting to local situations and context and that is what mr michael velisramani has been also talking about specifically context specific solutions which are required and sustainability also means conserve preserve and regenerate yes so i think if you can bring these five areas you know adopt adapt conserve preserve and regenerate then the whole thing becomes integrated Uh, but i think if for kan kanya shoreline problem in kanyakumari uh, we have different. reached the uh, uh, most uh, beyond uh, carrying capacity and thinkable stage yes yeah it's so, also there in also there's no more adaptation you have to retreat it's also there in puducherry it's also yeah. there in in Puducherry. kerala near veli and uh, you know 
Kuchiveli and Pundapura and Chalanam and places like that, you know, this is happening. Yeah, because another thing is, you know, wind is very low there. So you have, you do not have dune protection in Kerala. Right. No, we saw that when the tsunami happened, you know, it is difficult to get that 500 meter, you know, coastal zone management, uh, you know, restriction because already it is so, you know, the settlement density is so high. Yes. So, you know, even to really do the reconstruction in the same area, you know, it is actually also going to be extremely difficult because of the coastal erosion, mm -hmm. which is happening. And as yes. you very rightly said, the more you try to protect, the more in the neighboring areas, you know, the more, uh, you know, the erosion happens. Yes. So the accretion is actually, as you said, one fourth and, you know, 75% is actually erosion happening. Yes. That is a challenge. Mm -hmm. But I think, sir, uh, erosion problem is a relatively in a lesser dimension. Uh, see, actually, for uh, if uh, accretion is uh, two times, one, one unit uh, area is eroding. Okay. That's my observation. And uh, Vinod Menon sir has made another uh, observation too. The Virinium port in Kerala is being converted into transshipment facility with over 95 lakh tons of rocks removed through a network of quarries in Western Guards, along with sand mining, deforestation, etc. How will the ecosystem be affected due to this? No, you should identify a place where um, uh, on the um, uh, uh, down dip direction, down drift direction. There's no major settlements. And if there are some settlements, you should give provision for them to move inward. If you are not, you are not able to do it, then it's not wise to do this uh, development. For example, in the Kartupal report, what has done is they have given compensation to the people already and they moved the entire Kartupali village and other two, three villages to inland. And they have bought their lands and they have converted into the um, um, facility. Now, nobody is there to shout. We should listen to Mr. Michael Vedashiramani because he's, you know, a lot of experience in Ganyakumari and Kerala. Yes. Actually, I was looking forward uh, for his introductory, um, sorry, concluding remarks. Even during the uh, presentation, I was wondering what Michael sir would be uh, telling on this. Yes. So, uh, I, I know when I look the, the uh, uh, watch, it's really, I think, something which is uh, already alarming scenario. I think uh, uh, respected Dr. Manon, uh, Dr. Ramogan, especially for enriching us and possibly I think what uh, Savita was telling, it is enrages me personally, because I know the coastal, I walked along this coastal area, especially Muttam, Tenga, Patinam. I've seen undisturbed and disturbed and all. And also about when you say about uh, Kadalur and all, I think I would say that most uncivilized people that we are today, <laughs> I think managing this country. I think if anybody is wounded, doesn't matter because that is the way I think things are going on and all. I don't know, even the coastal uh, district collectors are aware of their uh, endangered uh, districts and what they are doing it and all. Unfortunately, unfortunately, what happens is in the, uh, whatever we see in the mountain, we see it and we react, but whatever go goes along the coastal area, we see it unnoticed because a small percentage of population or the coastal fishermen, they suffer or uh, in silence or uh, they are party to it and all. Though we have got a good, good policy that, uh, like uh, Dr. Manon said about CRZ, that CRZ has been, I think, much, I think, uh, what you call diluted now. Formerly, we said 500 meters, like what exactly what you said about the houses falling and all. <laughs> I think that is the reality and that is going to be more reality. You have cautioned so well, uh, but uh, maybe sometimes I always feel as a professor to both of you, both Vinod Man and of course, I would say not only he's a, a professor, he's also been an activist, but what is happening? It's all something seems like something looks like a postmortem. After all has done, then we prepare a report, present a report for whom? 
This is the question mark. I ask it and all. There is a beautiful saying in Malayalam which I say, Ippadam Shankaran Pengilu Thanne. That means you are toiling, I am toiling, professor is toiling in Anna University and Anna Malay University and all universities. But that poor man Shankaran is not able to move because of our contribution, contribution of uh, IAS officers, contribution to the, uh, what you call the legislature, to the executive and the judiciary. I think we are taking for granted, I think, uh, especially the common man. Uh, particularly, I think when you, I, th I don't think it is anything what, to, uh, uh, if there is any corrections could be made in Kanyakum, it is it. It's very disturbing. I've seen uh, uh, after that tsunami, I walked along that, uh, that 60, 68 kilometers, walked along and seen it, what is happening in Tendon. Another tsunami, I don't think Kanyakum district could bear and another should not come, God forbid that. Today is Vinayam Sadurti. I think God should be kind to <laughs> kind to our land and people should respect nature. I think we, as, I think occasionally, I think like a, like a dynamite, I think Professor uh, Ramo nicely put it, like the contractor is benefiting. If only the contractor is benefiting in the development of this country, there is no doubt about it. It's very clear. Whether it's a PWD, Dr. Rajaji used to say, PWD is a public waste department. He used to write it and say it and all. I don't think that they are very different today. I don't think we, we say that we have got technology. We have got uh, IIT Chennai. So I used to make a remark since professors are there. Either there should be IIT Chennai or there should be Kuwam. <laughs> both cannot coexist. But both coexist. That is India. That is what is great. <laughs> and I used to say that Madras University, Vice Chancellor's nose has been become numb because he doesn't sense it. Otherwise, Kuvam smell should have made him to act. I think uh, Kuvam, by the Vice Chancellor of Madras University is sitting on the banks. I think his uh, certainly nose has become his numbest what I have to say. And to, just to Dr. Ramogan, I said, maybe I take this, uh, take this uh, liberty because I was also seen as a director and Vice Chancellor of the Rajiv Gandhi Institute, Sri Parambadur, but we have not met. <laughs> but I think we have just came to know. Thanks for cautioning. And it's a, such a great warning you're telling what to Kanyakumari district. This is what is the situation to almost all the districts and all. Like what you said, piling. I think uh, Kanyakumari district, I am already agitated because rubber introduction is itself is a, is a environmental suicide. Today, when you said it, uh, even the coconuts are going out. Black palm tree, we have just forgotten it and all. What you said it piling. When you said piling, I was remembering the black palm. Maybe in Kanyakumari district, after a few days, I mean, the black palm will not be the this is the way we are taking the development. Great uh, IAS officers have remained as collector for what I don't know. But the common man should say whether we are benefiting. I think we have to respect nature. I think at this rate, I think we have to raise voice because the system has not served the purpose. People, the local people have seen the environmental impact assessment. We say the local people's voice is important. Now I understand what is local people. The local people, when you, when you exactly said, because in the Arabian, uh, sorry, uh, if I understood properly, in the, uh, in the eastern coast, it is the, uh, the, the sand moves towards the north. Any disturbance, it's a, it, it uh, doubly reacts, like what you said. So, uh, the, the, the sea is very dynamic. It's really very dynamic. Like what you said, today, is, is, uh, today morning is different, today evening is different. But I think you have to adjust. But we are again constructing the same places instead of replacing them and wasting money, wasting resources and all. I think there is no proper planning. There's no long-term planning. There's just short-term planning. Uh, I think we just give the relief and just forget about the disaster because I don't think after the cyclone, Woki cyclone, or after the tsunami, Kanyakumri district has really prepared anything, but I doubt it. I doubt it uh, as a very consciously as an individual, a consciously as a citizen. So that is what is the challenge today when we say, I think uh, resilient India by 2030, lot much to be done, lot much to be done. Today, I think it is something like a bomb blast, I think Dr. Ramo and said uh, along the coast. We have covered only Tamil Nadu little because focusing on Kanyakumari could relate. But same is the problem in Kerala, all over. Yes, and we, 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 all over we the problem. We in Kerala also. We are equally horrible. Students from equally Kerala. Horrible. We yes. are getting some students from Kerala, so we ask the students to do it in their home state. Because no, but they do it and sub submit a report to you and you remain it, value it and mark it and that's the end of it. No, no, no. <laughs> as far as studies are concerned, right. work which is carried out is not very accurate. 
But, it but is, even then, it's a caution. It's only a training for the students to do such so That's right. It is I not know. for uh, finding something. It is only training the students to do the work. Because right. it's a limitation. We can't spend 100 days in the field collecting the data. Right, right. What right. is necessary for these things is several days of field work. And they can't go to field work and try to uh, spend all the time there. So the, our right. project reports are only training the students. Right. That's, that's, uh, that's Finding out something. And even if we yeah. find out something, when we say nobody is going to accept it. That's the problem. That's what wisdom comes, but then we don't respect it. That's the problem. So I think the administrators and academicians should sit together for at least that district. Like for, like Manon Manyanar, you just told it, what is the study? They have done it and all. The district collector should discuss and say immediately there should be an action plan. We are lacking it and all. Just mm -hmm. a report submitted and all. Few questions the assembly. Unfortunately, there's a lot many things to be done. Anyway, I think disaster always teaches lessons. One after another disaster, I think everything we uh, go on learning. I think thanks to Suresh for his passionate presentation about cyclone and Woki cyclone. And everything is uh, picturizing, it's very painful. All those who have left us, it's very sad because of uh, uh, because of not proper planning. But I think future, we have to be optimistic because we are living in this world and we should do something better. So that I think we respect nature. If you start respecting nature, I think things will be better as there is time long time and uh, I would especially congratulate uh, all the participants and also for especially to Dr. Ram Mohan for throwing such a great uh, insight and uh, and I would say uh, create interest in us and, uh, and people like those who belong to the district especially for the students I would say please make it a point to walk along this line and understand don't be a mere uh, by this presentation and remind it you will not make it anything Please walk along some 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, go along with your brother or your parents and just walk and understand there's a life learning because this is something like a whistleblowing caution. I think Dr. Ramon has said it and we have to learn and appreciate and we are the people going to act. If we don't act, collector is not going to act. Collector is a paid servant. Mm -hmm. He will leave it just like that. If Kanyakumari district has to be taken care of, it is not the district collector or the SP of police. It is a local people. He's a paid servant. Collector is the paid servant. The moment he said, please leave, he will leave. That's all his interest is. So please, the local people, I think, have to think it off and we have to make a better tomorrow. So thank you very much for one and all and especially to Ayapa College for taking this great initiative of creating awareness, like what uh, the professor said, training. I think we are creating awareness so that something, some of us will lack something but still, Kanyakumari is naturally bountiful. I think we should respect it and do something better for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much for this great opportunity to one and all. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. What you said is exactly right. It's, it's, we are, uh, now it's with the people to uh, respond and uh, react. And the rubber, uh, the, especially the place which I come from, uh, uh, there, uh, my generation cannot thrive without rubber, unfortunately. And uh, even in my home, I'm not permitted to speak against rubber. Uh, that's something uh, very, uh, uh, a thing to worry about. And now uh, let me invite uh, uh, Suresh Kumar, sir, to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of uh, Sri Aipa College for Women and DMRT, sir, please. Thank you. Today, really, on the day of an auspicious day, Vinayak Chadarthi, whether we have to set the program or not, there was a big question. I said, Ganeshji having a bigger two years to listen. So listen. thank God for <laughs> allowing us to listen. And many listeners are united and connected and experts are here to teach us. So all major cities in the world are built 50 to 100 kilometers radius of coastline across the world. India and the Tamil Nadu, Kanyakumari is not an exception. Today, our chief patron, Professor Vinod C. Menon, sir, founder member NDMA. Sir, thanks for your constant encouragement, ice breaking the expert opinion and the set the session move on. Thank you very much, sir, for your encouragement. Now, our chairman, uh, sir, Michael, sir, already engaged with another program. Still, he make it a point to join uh, and absorb us. Sir is with renewed vigor 
with the renewed vigor he wanted to do something to the uh, country with that urge only he speaking many uh, novel and uh, practical experience so sir already told that uh, don't depend on this presentation and uh, guidance have a transact walk move on to the coastal side the sea get the experience sit and plan for future generation we call it transact walk so that is more important so sir has given lot of uh, touch to kuwam also uh, sir thank you very much for your rich experience and expertise to make the day happen thank you very much thank you. our madam principal always uh, major encouraging tool to set the motion of the meeting with uh, ideas and uh, suggestions opinion and uh, keep the uh, session move on thank you very much madam for your suggestions and uh, blessings thank you my professor uh, professor dr k meena madam hod commerce and coordinator of ia india internal quality assurance lab shia pa college madam thank you very much my professor today's distinguished speaker dr uh, v ramohan sir i met in 2014 in one of the nidm national stress disaster management training program he has presented there only 2 hours but throughout the night 7 o'clock to 10 11 12 1 o'clock uh, students and the faculties they were together and we had a very good experience sir after that uh, in ata tamil nadu uh, uh, sir is uh, going to different uh, districts conducting program for stakeholders of the state sdme and i too also a, a trainer in some of the pro training programs and uh, personally sir used to visit kanyakumari that's why he has uh, touched many of the points I, i our chairman used to caution me you don't uh, go on international uh, experience and expertise here you localize the situation then only we can bring some uh, idea so sir is a very uh, fond of kanyakumari district he used to visit along with family so his rich vast experience in the field he joined in uh, uh, geological survey of india and he worked in kunur he is a best man to speak about landslide and he worked in kerala mines mineral tamil nadu government uh, office he worked and he gathered more than 56 phd scholars and they are they have given some of them have given appreciation here 56 uh, 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 experts he has created uh, his life. sir thank you very much 52 21 21 okay ampel 56 ampel ampel okay thank you very much sir for your uh, nice presentation touched the photos informations your uh, suggestions especially mangroves you touched very much sir thank you very much sir you have given lot of solution i hope uh, madam used to caution anthropogenic changes are the problem of all yes. the coastline so people are the problem not the nature so let us live with the nature that is your findings thank you very much sir on behalf of shia epa college for women and dmrt thank you very much sir now our professor valiyappan sir from ms university is always with us encouraging us thank you very much sir and uh, uh, professor yar savida organizing secretary he take pain to organize especially today he has lot of uh, personal inconvenience and uh, discomforts in spite of that we you scheduled the meeting on behalf of the organizing committee and the ganesh chaturthi day ganesh chaturthi day thank you very much for your uh, uh, what do you call initiatives and last but not least the delegates you are more responsible and you have given lot of comments suggestion opinion questions so because of your participation this session is made to happen thank you very much once again i extend the vinagre chatvite thank you very much sir thank you thank, thank you. you for giving the opportunity thank you thank you <laughs> thank you sir thank you professor uh, you also gave an opportunity to meet uh, honorable man and yeah Manan. professor savida kindly unmute your mic uh, to professor to uh, heman bisht here i would like to inform you that this is being uh, live casted in the youtube and the session is there in the youtube uh, i'll i'll post the youtube link here before ending the session and uh, thank you everyone
for uh, being with us on, on this auspicious day, uh, even though it is a holiday, uh, you have uh, sacrificed your uh, holiday and celebration and uh, you are here and I have posted the YouTube link also. So thank you everyone. Uh, thank you all the seniors and with all your blessings, we will continue this journey and uh, uh, see you again uh, sat next Saturday. Uh, uh, for the time being, the team, uh, Youth Red Cross and IQAC3, IEPA College for Women and DMRT is signing off. Happy Ganesh Chaturthi to everyone again. Thank you so much. The link is uploaded. Link is uploaded. Thank you. So shall I end the session? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.